continued from the last video. That's the thing. No, we can't sit down and have a reasonable conversation. I couldn't possibly treat you with respect. I couldn't possibly tell the truth. I couldn't possibly be honest. So I'm just going to lie to you. That never happened. That's never happened to me. No one's ever woken up during a surgery that I've, I, I've performed. No, absolutely. I woke up during the surgery while they were hacking bone out of me. The surgeon was terrified. The nurse blew the whistle. This, the anesthesiologist had left the room, had left my side. The anesthesiologist has one job to do, and that is to stay by your side and monitor your vitals and make sure that you don't wake up or make sure that you don't die or to make sure that the oxygen doesn't, whatever, right? The anesthesiologist has one job to do, to protect you. The anesthesiologist screws, up, screws off and you're, you, you wake up while, while a surgeon's hacking bone out of your face. You're severely traumatized. They couldn't possibly tell you, tell the truth, right? So I, 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 it took me a long time to figure out this was the anesthesiologist's job. This is what I'm seeing. I've seen like, like even intelligent people, wealthy people trying to figure out what happened, what went wrong during surgeries. What I'm often seeing is what, uh, uh, you find out that something went wrong with anesthesiology, not the surgeon. We're often thinking, what did the surgeon do wrong? Often, like, you have to get educated. You have to learn and read and dig and research. Often something's happening with the anesthesiologist or whatever, right? When I was injured from uh, an epidural with OBGYN, I thought it was the OBGYN's fault. I was brain injured or or had a brain bleed or or I don't know exactly what happened. But you think it's the the surgeon's fault, the OBGYN. It wasn't. It 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 took me a long time to figure out it was the anesthesiologist. It was the epidural that person was in charge that you know i believe they cut through the dura with the needle and pulled down on the brain and caused damage to the brain and i have i've never spoken to anybody who's and i'm sure they are uh, there are people out there who've had the exact same injury there always is don't ever think that something unique has happened to you and there aren't other people. It's just a matter of finding those people. And it might take years to find those people. What happened to me was I started having numbness from like full body numbness, except the face. And I was like that for a couple of years and loss of, loss of core, core body strength. And I don't think I, I have ever totally recovered from that. But here I go, you know, I'm so sleep deprived. I started, started to get too much into details, but, but again, uh, I was threatened. I was threatened at, from that epidural injury. Family doctor threatened me. All the, uh, all, and I will, I will say this, all the dumb mistakes. I'm not, not, see, the epidural injury was an accident. It's the lying and the covering up. It's the gaslighting. We were a hundred percent gaslighted. What happened with the family doctor, I don't even want to get into it, but she made up a story that wasn't true uh, about my full body numbness. I don't, I, I've, I've talked about it before on video. I don't know if somebody could be that stupid or, or she made that up to shut me up. <laughs> you know what? That's the thing. If I don't go into detail, it sounds fantastical, right? If I go into detail, then you'll understand, oh crap. Then 
then you'll understand what I'm, I'm talking about. And that's the thing. You get too much into detail and people are like, oh God, I can't. It's just too much, right? And it is too much. That's the problem, you know. Then you find a family, new family doctor, like I just found one. And it's like, oh my God, it's too much. Yeah, it is too much. Nobody wants to deal with it. It is too much. And and all the lying that's happening. One surgeon I walked out of his office. I was fighting to get a trach. And I'm still, I, I still often think I need a trach. Maybe I'll start sleeping if I get a trach, a tracheostomy. Walked out of the surgeon's office and I was so thankful. I was, I had tears in my eyes and a lump in my throat and I walked out of his office thanking God for putting this guy in my path. He was so lovely and I thought, this is it. This is the guy that's going to get me the help I need. And he reassured me that he was going to contact everybody. He's going to contact the neurosurgeon, the neurologist, the family doctor, the respirologist. And they were going to have a meeting about whether or not to do a trach, because a trach is a serious thing. And they walked out of there thanking God. And I thought, this is it. This is the guy that's going to save me. I waited for a week. I waited weeks for the family doctor to get the report. The guy lied in the report and said that I wasn't interested in surgery. The family doctor told me this and she's looking at me and I'm looking at her. I said, that's not true at all. And now she's... I think she knew that he was lying. And she said, well, why would he lie? I think she knew. I'll never understand this. I will never understand what's, I'll never understand any of us. That surgeon knew that I, I had been injured, medication injured, and almost killed. I, I was in fight or flight. I was, I was in a state of terror and trauma. You could tell he, he, he did not want to deal with me. He did not want a traumatized, terrified patient. It was so wrong that I was at these appointments by myself. This was so wrong. So wrong that there's no advocacy for people, for patients. You know, that's the thing. You start out innocent. You start out lovely. They all love you. You're taking directions. You're a yes man. You believe everything. You take all the medications. You you know, everything's just all, all perfect, right? And then you get injured. And then you get injured. And then you get over-medicated and over-medicated and injured from a surgery. And now you're the enemy. Now you're undesirable. Now you're angry. You're upset. You're angry... <laughs> It's not you're angry at innocent accidents or oversights. You're angry at all the lying. You're angry at the mistreatment, the mistrust, the disrespect. At a, at a doctor looking you right in the eye and saying that never happened. You're angry at the gaslighting. You're outraged at the mistreatment. All the gaslighting is so is so abusive and disrespectful. Gaslighting should be called what it is. It's, it's abuse. It's abuse to look at a, uh, a child or an adult and you're screwing with them. You're, you're screwing with their mind. Oh, well, that never, that's never happened when I've done a surgery. You've woken up as during like all the lying and gaslighting. All you have to say is, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It, you know, this is so rare that a patient wakes up during a surgery. We're so, so All of that, I could have been 100% satisfied with the truth. 100%, you know, placated. 
made at peace with the truth. I will never be at peace with, with lying, lying to me and lying about me. Imagine, see, it's the betrayal of trust. It's a doctor. It's a respected. These are not, you know, bad, terrible monsters that are out of control. These are respected people in our community. These are respected people. It's the betrayal of trust. It's looking at someone who's respected and has power, and they're looking at you lying. Why do we need to do this to people? Why isn't there anyone to guide patients? Why isn't there any patient advocacy? And then they get wind of, of other doctors get wind of what happened. You're seeing other, uh, uh, this one respirologist. I was in absolute crisis. Uh, I was taught, I was literally out of, you know, I say literally out of my mind, but you know what? I was sleeping one or two hours a night. I was in a state of panic trauma. I do not make things up. I do not think that anybody's out to get me. When I say I was out of my mind, that's incorrect. It's, it's, it, I'm misrepresenting myself when I say that. What I mean to say is I'm in a total state of trauma and terror and fight or flight and panicked and angry and scared. But I do not make things up. And I don't lie. I don't lie about what, what has happened with doctors. And, uh, and I'm in that state. I don't even know how, how what, what do I call that state? And a doctor's asking me questions and this and that. And I uh, asking about Medicaid. I said, yeah, I was over medicated. Well, how about I send you a referral to your psychiatrist? And I said, I don't have a psychiatrist. He said, well, your, your last psychiatrist that you saw, I said, I haven't seen a, a psychiatrist. I haven't seen that person in, in 10 years. That is not my psychiatrist. Well, how about I send you back, back to them? No. Why would I want to go back to them? I'm in a medical crisis. Why would I want to go back to them? Because this guy is, is making a mistake thinking that this is a mental health issue. He says, well, can I send her? And I'm in, I'm in respiratory crisis. I have severe apnea. I'm stopping breathing nonstop. I'm, I'm sleeping one or two hours a night. He says, can I send her a copy of this report? I said, absolutely not. He said, why not? I said, I haven't seen her in 10 years. What is currently happening to me is absolutely none of that doctor's business. So what did he do? Against my wishes, I explicitly said, you cannot, no, you may not send her a copy of this report. He deliberately sent her a copy of the report and also included the words, she feels that you were over-prescribing her drugs. She, that doctor was over-prescribing me drugs. I can prove it to you. I can prove it to, to you with my pharmacy records. But why would this guy go out of his way to make trouble to doctors I haven't seen in 10 years. He's blowing the whistle that I'm a troublemaker. I've seen other reviews on that doctor from 10 years ago. Patients seen I was drugged and more and, drug, more and more drugs to the point I couldn't function anymore. Or what she did to my mom more and more medications to the point now my mom has lost everything. She's overweight. She's lost all her friends. She doesn't work. She's a zombie on all these drugs. 
I'm seeing these consistent reviews by patients. Then I find out, and I'm pleased by this because these, these comments align with my comments because that's the way I was, right? I'm now on, on no drugs. That, that's the way they had me all drugged up into oblivion, drugged, drug me into disability. And then they're diagnosing me with more and more things, right? Major depressive disorder, seasonal affective disorder, sleep-related eating disorder, ADHD, uh, PMDD, um, just on and on. And then drugging me for those disorders. And then I'm sick from the drugs and I'm getting more drugs and being diagnosed with more disorders. Prescribing Cascade, right? You're, you're creating illnesses with drugs, giving more drugs and more drugs and creating more and more illnesses, right? That's what that doctor did to me and, and many others. Then I find out then I see that my comment has been removed from the review site and the other woman's comment has been removed and the other comments and I'm, I'm dumbfounded because it says on the site that comments cannot be removed. Then I find out through a newspaper article that these physicians are paying hundreds of dollars to remove comments. This is the fairness and justice we have in this world. You've been harmed. You've been made sick for years. You finally find out, uh, find out, ah. Uh, Here's a place where my voice can finally be heard. My voice can finally be heard. And you go back and you've been silenced. The doctor has paid a couple hundred dollars to remove your comments, your comment and other people's comments. This is the system that we're, we're living with. This is the, this is how, how patients are respected. This is the respect we get which is none. And you hear me saying the truth, and this is what makes me a bad person, right? This is what makes me a bad guy, the bad guy in all of this, because I'm, I'm speaking the truth. That doctor who had me so drug, and then my next family doctor had me just drugged to the eyeballs. These two doctors had me so drugged up at times, I, I couldn't walk and I couldn't breathe. But I am the enemy for speaking the truth. I had to get off all of those drugs to fight for my life. But I'm the enemy in this. And you see silence, right? The, and you think, you think the public's going to be on your side. And they are, but 99% but of them are silent. And they fall back and they're just watching. Because they know you're in deep trouble. It's, you're a whistleblower. Then doctors don't want to see you. Like the one guy said, you know too much. So yeah, I'm in need of health care. I need help. Doctors don't want to see me because I know the truth. It's It's really confusing because... These are, these are reputable doctors. These are respected doctors. It's betrayal of trust. It's, it's bullying. So you find a new doctor and he says, what's going on? Uh, why, why are they turning you away? Probably they know. I don't know. How do you explain this to a new doctor? How do you get, how do you not, how do you make it so that the new doctor's not instantly disenchanted by all this? They can't undo this mess. How do you get a new doctor to want to fight for you? Or just say, man, this is a, they say, they just go, man, it's just such a mess. I can't, I can't deal with this. These are respected doctors. How do you? 
Do you think I'm going to make it out of this alive? You know, I, I guess I never really realized it. I'm a whistleblower. And you're going to pay one hell of a price if you talk, if you speak the truth. You know what? Like, like I, I have no other term other, other, to, other than to say I was out of my mind for four and a half years, sleeping one or two hours a night. Just, I needed some help to, I needed guidance. I still need an advocate. Like, what are the chances I'm going to make it out of this? What are the chances I'm going to get health care? Why is this happening? Because I'm telling the truth. And there's no one to, to, there's no patient advocacy and there's no one to protect patients from being turned away.